one. Hi everyone, I am Christine Jossie of Mail Something Pretty and I have this really fun card to show you. Um, it's called a Pinwheel Surprise. Um, it's, you know, there's different um, card trends that's going around, so this one kind of happens to be going around now. I added a little element that says pull so that people know that you pull it and this opens. So when it opens up, you get a little surprise on the inside. So this one I stamped um, for Christmas. And so I'm gonna show you how to make it. So um, just to show you a few things, because I'm using some new products. This is a new um, stamp set called Joy To You, and it's in the new mini uh, catalog, the holiday catalog, that I can't really open up yet. Um, I'm supposed to wait until September. So, but I can show you the cover and I can show you the products. So I think that's good enough. Um, so I used this set and I also used the new, um, I forget the name of it, Mary Bolden Bright Paper. And what I liked about this paper was, yeah, it's Christmas. It's certainly bold and bright, but you could use this for a lot of things for non-Christmas. So certainly birthday um, strikes out at me. So it's all these fun, bright colors, which I like just show you all the patterns here and those are all the patterns in the pack so that's a fun pack of paper all right so I decided a lot of people are making these um, a regular card um, and they stamp a little something on the bottom but because I put words on the inside of mine I didn't really have any words and I didn't have any um, Christmassy things to put on there so I decided to make mine a square card which I like square cards anyway so that's what I did so we're gonna make a different color and a different pattern for this one so I'm using uh, this one was shaded spruce and that goes along with the color of the pack of the paper and this one is poppy parade so they use poppy parade instead of red because at first I thought it was red and when I looked at the colors on the listing and did you know that actually let me show you that did you know that um, underneath the names of the paper it tells you what the coordinating colors are so that's really helpful so it said use poppy break so I did that instead all right so what we need so you need your card base whatever side if you're doing the standard size or a uh, square card and you need a six by six piece of patterned paper and the pattern paper works better because it's a little bit lighter and easier to fold. And I'm going to score it one and a half inches on all four sides. So that's one side, two sides. Make sure I'm straight here. Three sides and one more. So it's easy scoring, whether you do it with your trimmer or if you do it with your um, scoreboard. And then you kind of decide which side you want to be on the inside. On that one I did uh, the polka dots on the inside and which side you kind of want the outside. So you are, let me put this back together, you are going to be able to see all patterns and really you actually do kind of see um, the same size of the front versus the when you, inside you see more of it. So I have to decide. I think I'll do the polka dots on the outside. So what I'm going to first do is cut off the squares, the four corners of that score mark. So you might not be able to see them on camera, but I can see them. And you can even save these if you want to make like a card that has little pieces of paper on them, or you can recycle them. Right now I'm saving mine and I'll see what, I'll see what I come up with. All right, so you're gonna end up with like a plus sign. And then we're gonna fold on all the score lines. Right now it doesn't matter which side goes up for the trees because um, we'll arrange it once I actually maybe I will decide. So that way is going up so I'm going to have it turn over that way. So what I'm going to do actually first here's a little trick to make sure it all lines up. So full, see how that's not really going down that means my cuts weren't so good. 
So then you might want to just go back and trim just a little bit so that it sits straight or closes straight. Yeah, I can see that with the score mark, there's like that little bump. That's better. Mm. This one I'm going to trim just a little bit. All right, so that sits flat. Okay. So I'm going to look at it that way. And I'm going to fold. Let's see. I have to remember which way I did it. Yeah. I started with the other thing is with it, you want paper that coordinates both inside and outside. This works okay. This one works better, I think. Um, but it should it should work when you put the whole card together. I think it will come together. But you definitely want some papers are not coordinating on both sides. All right, so you're just gonna fold this back, and then I'm gonna close this one, and I'm gonna fold this one back. Okay. I'm sure you get the idea. In I'm just going to rotate it because it's easier for me. Now close that one and then fold that one back. Just want to make sure that you get good corners. And then this one. Is that the fourth one? Yeah, that's the fourth one. All right. So then you have this one that's kind of left over. So that's the one that gets tucked in. And it makes your pinwheel. Isn't that cool? So then... We'll put a little surprise message on the inside. So, oh, that didn't get scored. Let me just score that real quick. I'm doing that so I don't wreck the paper that was underneath of it. All right, and I also like my cards, my square cards to open up that way because I think they sit better than this way. Sometimes they flop down. So I'm gonna hold my base that way. And then there we go. I cut a few things already. I cut, look at those two together. They're beautiful. It's Poppy Parade and Lemon Lime Twist. Oh, I like that. So this will go, actually, let me close it. I'll go close it again. Hold on. I have to decide which one. I want my tuck to be over here. So I start that closed down. Um, there we go. So this I'm going to glue on top of that. This is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. I'm just really, none, none of my trees are, isn't that interesting? So my trees are all sideways here, but when you open it up, they're upright. So I'm going to keep it that way. Something to think about with the directions of the paper and then this is just going to go right on the card like that I thought about also embossing like giving a little texture to this outside I just didn't have the right I wasn't sure which embossing folder I wanted to use so I, then I just decided to leave it plain but you can do that if you think it's too plain all right so what we're going to do for the inside is again I'm using this stamp set so I'm going to use this one the may your Christmas be very and bright it's almost square it's not exactly square so I just um, this is bigger than I want it to be so I'm going to cut it but I decided to use different colors just to kind of mimic um, Kind of the, the papers so i'm using old olive these are stamp and write markers um, that i just love this technique you just color right on the stamp i personally think the red rubber stamps work better for this technique than the photopolymer you can do the photopolymer um, but sometimes you just have to color a couple times it just doesn't hold the colors as well I think all right so that's old olive and I used um, I didn't have 
Oh, actually, that's a different color. I didn't have shaded spruce, so I used uh, Pretty Peacock, which matches pretty close. So that's what I'm using. And then this is a great way, again, if you don't have all the ink pads, but you have some markers, it just lends your kind of color palette better. This is Melon Mambo, which is in the colors also. That was one of the polka dot colors. It's interesting, I would never think to put Melon Mambo and Poppy Parade together, but it works. And the last color I'm going to use, I'm going to spin that around, is Blueberry Bushel. Again, I just kind of picked colors that went with a whole pack of paper because I'm making multiples of these with all the different designs. So I just wanted all my, my colors. Actually, I don't need that. I'm just going to put that down just so I can see it better or you can see it better. All right, so after you color on your stamp, you then, um, because I was talking and, and there was a lot of coloring, that top one especially may have dried, or some of it may have dried. So I'm gonna breathe on it or huff on it and the moisture of my breath will kind of re-moisten um, or just give a little moisture to the ink. And then I will stamp. And then what I will do, um, this is my largest square of these stylus shapes. Um, and then I'll just cut it out. Like I said, it's almost square. It's not exactly square. So I already cut one out. So that will pop right on the inside like that. think you can cut a three by three square it will fit in this folded square or even if you wanted to see a little bit more two and three quarter square will fit in there all right and so some people I'll show you a couple options are leaving it just like that but I added this little pull tab because a non crafting person might not know that there's something tucked inside so I added that um, these were my the first ones that I did the mock-ups just to try it out so these tabs right here I left these ones kind of open these ones I glued down and it still opens up and these ones I left kind of up so you can decide if you want to glue this down so that it's more flat or if you want to leave them kind of up and then I took this little, let's try to tag die cut. And I want to show you where I got that from. I actually got it from the new Tricks and Treats dies, um, which I'm going to use in another video in another project. But, so I didn't set these up. You actually get two of these dies um, in this set because the, you get a template to make a box or a little gift bag. So I don't know where the second one is, but you get two of those and you get this box. Oh, there it is, um, which is really nice. So it's actually, even though it's a Halloween set, I'm gonna be using it for a lot more than non-Halloween. You even get this, this is like a candy corn die, but you can use this like, for all different shapes so you can make a, a flower so you can use them again I try to get things that have more than one purpose but anyways just so you know where oh and it disappeared my little die came from and I also used I was looking through my stamps and I was going through my um, paper pumpkin because I, I have many many old because I was a beginner subscriber to paper pumpkin which is a monthly crafting kit if you don't know what it is and you get um, a kit in the mail every month with projects to do and you get stamps with them so I happened to notice that one of the this is 
quite old, but it's had a pull, and so it must have been from a project. I don't even remember what kit this was from, and it had pull. So that's what I use. But if you don't have anything like that, you could, you know, you can make your own little tag, and you can just write open or pull with your handwriting. But since I found something. to use it and that's what's great about paper pumpkin is you get all these stamps that are not included in any stamp set um, and it just ties it in together um, so you save them and you just reuse them I'm using linen thread which is one of my favorite embellishments I'm just going to tie it and then tie a little bow I love white string as well, but what's great about linen thread is it matches everything because it's neutral. You can make it fancy, you can make it rustic. It's just a great, great thing. All right, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to fuss with that, but I'm just going to use a dimensional to stick that on. So actually, I'm going to actually just stick the dimensional right there and then just pull it. So it's kind of like an arrow, but they can just lift this up and it, they'll see that there's something underneath. And on the inside, I just did an easy, uh, just another square and we'll just stamp Merry Christmas. I think this came from the new polar bear stamp set. I don't think I brought that up here. And then we'll just put that inside. And then I, oh, look at what I did. Ah. I didn't put that on the wrong. Well, luckily that can probably come off. Ooh. I was looking at the tree in the right direction, but remember it didn't go in the right direction. Woo. That was a quick save. All right, so that opens up. This will go in the right way. There we go. And there you go. So there's two versions. And again, if you wanted that glued down, you can. Um, but I think it, this one helps because it, it, someone's going to grab their finger. Um, I just think they're kind of fun and you can do them for any reason. I'll definitely be making, I think for Halloween, especially I figured we can put some of these faces on the inside, which would be fun. But anyways, that is how you make the surprise. What's it called again? Let's forget the pinwheel surprise. So I hope you liked it. I'll be making more with um, this paper, which is fun and bright and happy too. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. Um, definitely let me know in the comments. If you do not receive my weekly emails, I suggest you might want to sign up and you can do that at mailsomethingpretty.com slash sign up or just visit my website at mailsomethingpretty.com and there's a sign up box right on the, um, the sidebar. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.